Hey guys, Mike, your host of Craft Beer Storm. How are you today? I hope you have a great, uh, you're having a good day. You're surviving the COVID craziness. Um, you know, the president came out and says he wants to open the country again, which is awesome. You know, we got to get back to work. We got to get things going again. And I, I feel for the breweries, the smaller breweries that are struggling during this period. And um, we have a, a guest on today from the Brewer Association. Her name is Julia Hers. And she's the craft beer uh, program director, and um, she also is publisher at craftbeer.com, which is cool. And uh, we got into the COVID, you know, what what's the impact on the industry, what she thinks, and, and what she's seeing, and really good conversation. So um, here we go. Hey, we have Julia Hers here. She's the uh, craft beer program director for the Brew Association. How are you, Julia? Hi, Michael. I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Awesome. I'm, I'm glad you carved some time out for uh, us here. Uh, where are you located? I'm standing today in my home in Lyons, Colorado. Oh, you're uh, in- it's outside of Boulder, Colorado, and kind of uh, in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Okay, very good. So um, I know the, the Craft Brewers Conference, I was going to go to it in San Antonio, and then the whole COVID thing happened, and uh, they canceled it. But uh, they're doing it now virtually. Uh, yeah, which is great. Weeks, five weeks long instead of uh, several days. Yeah. So, so tell me about yourself. What are you doing at the uh, the Brewers Association? I know you're the craft beer program director. What does that entail? Like, what are your duties and what do you do there? Sure. Um, I've been at the Brewers Association collectively 16 years. Wow. Uh, and the craft beer program that I run is devoted to educating and advocating for U.S. craft brewers. Um, I'm kind of a, a voice and an advocate for craft beer, uh, writer, speaker, and behind the scenes publishing craftbeer.com, as well as uh, leading the charge on the independent craft brewer seal, along with many, um, frankly, thousands, almost 5,000 breweries and uh, the EPA staffers engaged in the independent craft brewer seal. And that's great. And and the uh, the topic of the day or the month or whatever of the year so far is this COVID and how it affects uh, the breweries. There's a lot of um, and I saw I think you, you published an article about curbside, uh, uh, cur- you know, tools breweries can use curbside economy. Maybe uh, you know their tap rooms are closed, but we can deliver. I think some states are allowing deliveries of beer, but also you can pull up and do like a curbside thing. Now, how what do you see? Because I, I see these. Uh, like uh, Bart Watson was, uh, I mean, I didn't see his, I, I think I had some pre-interview with him, but he was talking about, um, you know, uh, thing feedback coming back from breweries. And it's not a, it's not a pretty picture. Like 46% of them say they're probably not going to survive if this thing keeps going on. I mean, what what are you hearing from this? Yeah. So um, you just mentioned our uh, chief economist. We collect uh Data from the U.S. breweries year in and year out, um, that's how we are able as a national association to provide statistics on a yearly basis. With COVID-19, um, we've done two surveys now in a very quick period of time in March, and the second survey was um, dismal results and sobering um, in that the majority of breweries, um, at least the ones that are responding to the survey, you know, 46%, I'm not going to call it majority, but it majority, but it's close. 46% said they will not be able to last one to three months. Um, so this continuing to go on week after week, month after month, is going to see more and more drop-ups of breweries that might not be able to reopen their doors. And that is such a disruption to a thriving yet challenged 8,000-plus small business um, community that, that happen to be brewers. I mean, they are, uh, you know, it's, it's growing. I mean, we're talking billions of dollars in this industry. I was looking at statistics and the craft brewers have I got like 13% of the market now, which is, yep. uh, it's a huge amount of money, you know, and a huge impact on the economy. And to let these guys just close up, it's not, it's not a good thing, you know. And, and I know, I know Trump came out and he says he wants the economy to start opening again on May 1st. And I'm hoping that states do that, you know. And not give pushback. I mean, we got to get this world open again. It's kind of ridiculous that we're closed. We just shut the thing down. I mean, you have to take precautions, but there's got to be an end, you know. And and I, I I feel for these guys. I had a brewery in New Hampshire, and like this 
this is horrible, you know, and it impacts them and, and they're, they're like, I mean, their brewers are like family, you know, I mean, they have people that work for them and, and they're like family and to let these yeah. people go. And, and now all of a sudden there's no business anymore. I mean, what do these people do? You know, then you got to start from zero again. Right. And, you know, many breweries are now taking advantage of the loosening up of the up and now the opportunity to actually do curbside sales where you drive up to the brewery, but you don't go in um, and ordering beer to go from them. That's been a huge opportunity, but it can't make up for the full sales that breweries used to do. Um, breweries are in a tough spot. So are restaurants. Um, and we're going to see our country as we get into the summer into even a more difficult space. Uh, where when we do have the reopening, right, um, reopening America again is the new plan we saw last week from the Fed and the White House. And um, we, uh, we're going to have a different mindset from different people on their comfort level on how to be comfortable in public spaces. So brewery tap rooms and brew pubs will certainly be grappling with that. Um, but they need and merit the business. Um, they are the small part of the small business engine of this country. Small business is the largest employer. Um, you know, craft breweries are now at 160,000 plus full and part time jobs in the U.S. Um, and so that is really important to remember. Uh, they also give us a great beer experience, right? As beer geeks who are listening and watching this, we want the best beer experience possible. And that doesn't always just come from going to the store and buying our beer to go. Um, and drink at home there, which is, uh, you know, something we will all continue to do. But it's also going into the breweries and, and the tap rooms and experiencing um, what they can deliver um, to us directly. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough time, and we need to remember to continue to smart, support all the local businesses around us, especially the small ones. It's just ridiculous. It's just the whole thing is just insane. And, uh, you know, I hear that with a, whoever came up with this social distancing, this PC word, this ridiculous word, social distancing, you're in a tap room, you know, it's kind of wall to wall people. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to do. What is everybody going to wear a mask? And now is the Fed going to come in and like really put some crazy restrictions on breweries where they have to do processes the certain way and everybody has to wear masks and gloves? Because it's a it's a consumable item, right? It's food, and what are the new yeah. regulations? Are they going to go insane? And then small breweries are not going to be able to keep up with it. They they'll have to close anyway. Even though if they, even if they survive this, I'm hoping that the Fed doesn't come in or the states or the cities and just kind of implement their insane uh, rules that kind of just squash breweries and restaurants. I'm hoping there's some, and I know the Brewers Association is behind, you know keeping breweries open i mean that's the whole purpose yeah, we're and... asking for multiple things that will will definitely help um and to get at the first part of what you were relaying um different states are going to take different approach right um there's suggestions of how to open in a phase by phase format and once you reach certain benchmarks you can go to the next phase and that's from the federal government on that reopening america again plan but then states like where I am in Colorado are looking at that and then modifying it and introducing their own phased out plan. Um, and bars are also classified differently than restaurants. So it is important to uh, take uh, note that different states will have different approaches. Different people will have different comfort levels. But um, at the end of the day, we're asking for things like, you know, um, making the excise tax relief that was um, – extended at the end of last year, making that permanent. So brewers are paying a more reasonable rate per barrel on what they produce. Um, so, you know, where we can give tax relief is, imper is, is an important one, where we can give relief on making sure that more funds are given to small businesses so they get that paycheck protection program in place mm -hmm. or can continue it. Um, so, the, you know, that money is out as of last week. Um, so there's multiple things. We also have... Uh, CO2 as an ingredient in beer is now production is lower because the majority of production comes from ethanol um, and uh, the demand for gas is down. So there's these emerging you know, challenges of ingredient supply. And then if you look at what's, who supports breweries, we're also concerned in watching them. Um, the allied trade and the supplier partners to breweries, everything from, you know, we've heard crawlers were out for a period of time. Um, the ingredient side, the farmers and growers, right? Um, the suppliers for packaging beyond that, you know, draft handles and merchandise um, and brewing equipment. 
Um, there's so many essential businesses to support the fragile brewing community that are also kind of swept up into this. So the more we can help breweries be successful and make it through the other side of this, the more we're also going to ensure those businesses that support them, the distributors and the allied trade, also have what they need to continue to keep their doors open. Absolutely. Now, did you hear anything about the Great American Beer Festival? Is that still going on, or what, what do you think? Sure. So we host the Great American Beer Festival. I started as a volunteer um, at the at that festival before I worked at the Brewers Association. 30-plus years strong. Um, that's in the fall. We're full steam ahead and, and planning it, but we're absolutely watching um, this unknown environment and, and what, you know, what time we're in. Uh, decisions right now um, for the fall and many events are being made and others are in a wait and see. We are watching and we are definitely still planning on hosting it. Yeah, I'm hoping that goes on. You know, I mean, if, if this thing lasts into the fall, this is going to be horrible. But I, I uh, but now, like now, it's going to. They have to start getting their entries ready or picking. You know, having getting stuff into the Brewers Association because I remember I had to do it and it was around the May June time frame. It's like, all right, what beers do you want to send in? They have to start producing these things, and I'm hoping that uh, we can loosen up and hopefully by the summer. And we just get it back back online, you know, get every everybody open again. I think people are pent up. They're at home. I, I noticed I'm in New York now, but I noticed the roads are getting a lot more busier. As soon as Trump said we're opening the country, I see a lot more cars on the roads. I'm like, these people, <laughs> everybody's out again. They're like, all right, we're open again. So now everybody's going out. And, um, you know, I hope we can kind of get back to normal with this. I think breweries are a great place. You know, we're always on our phones. We're always texting people. Breweries are a great place where you can sit with somebody and have a beer and have that interaction, that human interaction. I don't know, since the social distancing and staying at home quarantine stuff, people are pent up and they want to get back in, you know. So I think if we can kind of allow it, I think the breweries will, will just bounce back and thrive. And I'm hoping that that, that does happen. Yeah, and that's getting getting to where we want to be. In the meantime, there's been an incredible amount of uh, – Opportunity for interactions. Breweries are doing online tastings. I've seen many virtual happy hours, many virtual festivals, state brewers guilds. There's guilds in each state that represent the interest for those craft breweries are hosting festivals. New York will have its own. Um, the New York State Brewers Guild is doing one that's coming up. So there's a lot of opportunity to still have interaction, albeit in this format, which is not what we you know, are built for long term. Um, but it certainly helps get us through it. And I've been enjoying the chance to digitally connect everyone with everyone such as you um, and your audience who are watching and listening and also the people I've been able to have a beer and talk about beer with on the uh, on the virtual side and all the Zooms and, and Skypes um, that I've been able to jump yeah. into in the last I've I've heard about it, like the happy hour or something like that. I'm, I'm thinking about doing my own, maybe on a Friday evening or something like that, and just throwing it out there. And then we do like a virtual happy hour, and everybody has a beer, and we all talk about it. And I think that's something that I want to start. But um, so it, it's for the CBC, how is that going? I mean, a lot of good response. And I tried to get into Bart's, uh, Bart Watson's uh, uh, call, but it, it was sold out, apparently. So... <laughs> Couldn't get in, we but have I... all of our seminars, forty plus for Craft Brewers Conference, um, are, that are being played over the series of five weeks, and we're in the early stage of that right now. As soon as they, um, they, you can sign up for free. Anyone can go to craftbrewersconference.com um, website. Uh, if it's booked and we have a cap, then you can simply, as soon as it's it's shared live, you can literally just rewatch it. Several minutes later, we reload it. So you'd be able to see it either way. Um, we're definitely trying to keep that collaborative educational piece going. That's what has, I think, driven a big part of the whole craft brewing community and the way we were able to disrupt, you know, a, a space that was traditionally run by corporations and big beer and they got beer to where it was. Um, but 1978, we had less than 100 brewing locations in the U.S. And, and today, you know, we've got 8,000 plus. We'll come to the other side of that with less than that. Um, but the education piece has been key to helping get people into this space and key to getting the innovation to continue to grow in craft beer. Yeah, there's a lot of good um, a lot of good seminars that you got uh, going on at the Craft Brewers Conference. And people can just go on there and, and sign up. It doesn't, you know, and it's free, like I said, which is great. You know, a lot of, a lot of conferences that are canceled are doing these free events, which is fantastic. So, I mean... Um, 
you know, based on your like gut feeling, how do you think all this stuff's going to shake out with the with the COVID? I mean, what what do you think's going to happen? I mean, what are you proje- projecting and predicting, or what are you guys thinking? Yeah, I mean, prediction game is always dangerous to get into, um, but you can certainly see the writing on the wall that we will have brewery closures. Um, we will have less jobs and less um, less brewery businesses. That means less beers in the marketplace. That less means less beer sales. Um, but the recovery into 2021, I think, is the big question. How quickly can you get an actual um, uh, you know, immunization or some type of solution that we are able then to all be safe um, against this? How fast that will happen will determine a lot, and then the prediction game will get a lot easier. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big question mark. We have to see. We'll find out as we move along, but hopefully we can bounce back from this, I think. I think it's just going to be a big, yeah, I think it's a big spring. It will spring back, you know, because it's... Yeah. Um, testing too, getting testing to be more accessible, um, I think will be a huge opportunity for people to have a bigger comfort level if and when we can test on an easier basis. Yeah, it's great. I mean... Um, so I think, you know, in terms of like a craft beer bubble, I don't know... Uh, Usually things go upward, like you see graphs of things going upward, and everybody was saying it's like a big bubble, but maybe there's going to be some type of correction coming anyway, right? Um, And it's just this COVID thing came in, and maybe this is kind of a correction, and then we kind of stabilize, and then we just keep growing up. I think that's what's probably going to happen, but we don't know as we move along. Now, um, so you're you're, you're near Denver, or? Um, Yeah, I'm about... For about an hour, 45 minutes. About an hour. In. So the, the Colorado beer scene's uh, blowing up. I mean, well, it's been blowing up. I went there um, for the Great American Beer Festival. We had a, uh, They gave us a tour and stuff like that last year uh, of, of Denver breweries. And um, what's a good thing about all the beer that you got for the uh, the craft, uh, craft Brewers Conference, you converted to sanitizer, I guess hand sanitizer, I think they were saying? Yeah, that was one solution is to take um, um, a big bulk of that beer that did get shipped in the middle of the whole um, COVID crisis kind of unfolding. We already had World Beer Cup entries um, under our uh, warehouse and supervision. Um, The World Beer Cup is a hosted event every other year by us. It's the um, kind of Olympics of beer and the most robust um, commercial global competition in the world. And so with all these entries, or many of them uh, in already our possession, it was a tough one to know what to do. Uh, therefore, we pivoted and went to the solution that we ended up um, through our executive chef, Chef Adam Dooley, um, working with several uh, um, distillers to get much of it distilled down to a hand sanitizer level. And so that was, I think, a great solution. A beer that would have just had to go stale, was not able to be shipped back, um, and was not able to be sold legally. So it was a great pivot and certainly excited to see that project unfold. So I think, yeah, so the World Beer Cup is going to be eliminated for this time, and then the next one will be two years from now, I guess? Or Yeah, I mean, TBD on if we try to make up for that with World Beer Cup in another time before the annual, biannual um, two-year phase. Uh, but it is every other year traditionally. And so, you know, a big hit, big hit to feedback that breweries um, wanted to get. And that's why they enter it, because we collect a world class judge pool with the majority of the Justice for World Beer Cup from out of the U.S. Mm. And it is, it is a total hit. Yeah, it's, it's a loss to the input that brewers would have gotten and the, men- and the awards yeah. um, that the brewers would have won. You think they might consider doing it next year, maybe? I don't know. Or do you I think, think it's just we're it's looking at is tough. This year is what we're talking about right now. It's really tough to, to go back past 2020. I mean, every organization, anyone listening and talking where you work, your place of work, decisions about 2020 are not quickly to be made right now. Mm. Um, we just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I know. I, I talked to Ann Obenchain a couple of times. I had some interviews with her and, she says these things take like three years to, to plan, like San Antonio. I'm like, yeah. well, we put, on, um, we put on events in the level of convention center. Um, you know, that's a lot of space and definitely takes many year planning out. 
yeah, it takes takes years for it to, to happen. So they're like, well, we're not going to do it anymore in San Antonio. We're going to San Diego next year, right? Is that That's where it's happening, I guess, San Diego. Yeah, San Diego. So, Michael, have you gotten to go beer from anyone or delivery of beer or no? Have I, have I gotten any delivery of beer? Have you gone through that experience or gone to pick up beer at a brewery at all? Um, I haven't, no, I haven't yet. Um, I've, I've been kind of inside and I, I haven't really, I've been on this, uh, actually it was a, a fitness program. I, like I didn't have beer for like 75 days. I didn't have any alcohol. It's called 75 hard for a brewer to do that. This is like some, it's like another level, right? So I, you know, I had to, uh, you know, eat clean. I exercise twice a day, 45 minute exercise, had to read 10 pages a day. Um, and no alcohol, like at all. So, are you done with the program? I'm done now. Yes, and I'm I'm going to go out to my my local brewery here, and I'm going to fill my growler and get in. I don't even yeah, know if I can get in. Mental, but mental health and physical health come up a lot. Um, being in beer, it's important to interrupt your appreciation and consumption. Um, big advocate of balance in that side of it. So I applaud you. It's it's really good, and then it's super fun when you kind of. I'm back on to the board of, yeah, I'm tasting it. But now. now I'm back, yeah. So I'm, I'm back. So I got to, but now I'm back and now everything's just thrown into a, like I was looking really forward to the CBC. Like I was like really looking forward to it. And, and then when yeah, it got canceled, I'm like, because I was on this program, I'm like, all right, I'm going to make up for it on the CBC. But it's done. But I want to do this virtual thing, I think. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of challenges. Um, you know, uh, a lot of breweries are uh, hurting. Hopefully, we can get through this without a lot of casualties, and you know, we can kind of move forward. I mean, the the country and the world um, uh, is is looking, and you know, uh, breweries are becoming more and more a, a part of society, and it's a great place where we can get together and 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 to not go into a tap room, not to be with people that you want to be with, and and celebrate beer, local beer. Is just hard, you know. It's bad. Yeah, but, but there's also the home brewing side. If you do love beer and you're kind of kept out of the mix, home brewing's huge opportunity. Homebrewersassociation.org is our big website for all those resources. And a big event's coming up called Big Brew that has been many, many years on May second. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're going to have hundreds, if not thousands, of home brewers um, brewing ten thousand gallon plus of you know home brew. And really getting back in touch with the source of the ingredients and brewing stove top or Cajun cooker style out on the patio like I do. Um, May 2nd and Big Brew is, is a super fun one. And if you've never homebrewed, it's a great time to start. And if you've homebrewed but haven't in a while, it's a great time to put again. Absolutely. I started as a home brewer and it's a, it's a great thing. You know, that's why I, I jumped from uh, five gallons to 200 gallons. So yeah, there you go. You got, go big or go home sometimes, but you can go back to home and do small. But that's like small, <laughs> like 200 gallons is small, right? Do. We need you know, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, people are starting with like, you know, well, seven barrel, but 15 barrel breweries. I think you need minimum set 15 barrel to kind of just keep things going distribution. And it's interesting what happened with the whole model. Like everybody, I mean, to make money in a small brewery, you got to have a tap room, right? Because the margins are the best in the tap room. But when the tap room closes and you're not really distributing, that really smacks a brewery like upside the head. Yeah, you know, call it own, own premise and 3.1 million barrels of beer um, of 21 or 20 plus million in 2018 was from the physical sales at brewery tap rooms and brew pubs. And that's, you know, that's a big chunk. And that number was growing and eking up. Um, so it was, it's a, it's one to try to kind of how do we process where that'll go, all go? I, I don't know yet, but you're right. Um, yeah, that the beer sold straight and direct from breweries was fresh, was handed to you by who brewed it and, or who knew the story oh, personally. Yeah. And it, it was def, definitely tap rooms and brew pubs are a great experience when uh, when things are firing in all cylinders and not in a COVID. Type of environment. Not in a COVID environment. All right, we're gonna get by. We're gonna get through this, and we're gonna be back. Yeah, right, we're gonna get through like this, and we're gonna be back. We're gonna be back. Yeah. Yep. So, like, what what kind of breweries do you have around you in your town? Have you uh, kind of visited them or um, got any curbside I, or? I do. I do. Michael, I've been trying to do the right thing and really stay home. Stir crazy for sure. I'm standing right now because I keep sitting all day, day after day, and I'm <laughs> forcing myself on these calls to stand sometimes. 
I um, know. But I got out on Friday to my first brewery that I allowed myself to go to that was doing to-go sales. And craftbrew.com, our website, has a, a database of over 1,000-plus breweries and saying who has sales. This one is City Star Brewing in Burford, Colorado, a little small town um, near my town of Lyons, Colorado. Um, Whitney and John, who own it, um, are amazing people, and I really wanted to go and support them. Uh, and so I ordered online through their website, push send, got my car, drove, went to what they were doing, um, you know, to check it out and physically pick up my beer. Their people had masks on. They had a tent on the outside of the brewery with a big, um, you know, sidewalk area. They made sure people didn't stand more than six feet um, close to each other when we were waiting in line to get our beer. And it was super neat. They also have a pay it forward program where you can actually buy somebody a beer through them. And then after COVID, they'll be able to go and pick it up um, and, and take advantage. That's of a great beer. idea. Yeah. That's a yeah. great idea. It's a good way to get some revenue in too, you know, like buying a beer. Yeah. I've seen, I've, I've interviewed people with apps. Like there's a guy who can, like you can go on your phone, like somebody's in LA and you're in New York, you want to buy him a beer. You can do that through the app. But I think the, uh, the breweries have to get creative now and figure out, okay, maybe gift cards or I don't know, like stuff like that. You know, buying a beer from yep, somebody. Merch here. Absolutely. But that's, uh, yeah, so it's challenging times, but, uh, you know, I think we'll be back. You know, there'll be some casualties, but I think we're just going to, you know, bounce back from this. Um, you know, uh, you know, I, I pray that uh, the breweries can remain strong through this, and, and I, I, w- I want to, you know, do whatever I can to help them out. You know, I, I just put it out there. If they want to get on the podcast, I'll interview them. I've interviewed a bunch of brewers and distillers also. The distillers are doing the hand sanitizer, which is really cool. Because uh, yeah. a lot of hospitals and stuff need that, so they're looking for yeah, like stale beer. Hundreds of breweries are too. Hundreds of breweries have pivoted. Yeah. Dog, Dogfish Head in New York um, coverage for New York Times. Um, Dogfish Head a week ago got coverage for their program for hand sanitizer. They also have a distillery, and they pivoted very quickly. Um, super cool, super cool thing. And to see how craft breweries have been doing that community support for you know first responders and healthcare professionals. I think has been huge Um, and many have been getting equipment, hand sanitizer and that protection equipment from breweries where they're able to provide something to help them out or to do a pay it forward program with six packs where you buy a six pack and then the shoots gives a six pack to a healthcare professional Mm -hmm. um, in their community in Oregon. So we're seeing, we're seeing lots of positive community engagement going back and forth brewery to community um, and that is that is what craft brewers do best. Yeah. They use their beer as a cause for other causes, and uh, we're still seeing that in this kind of crisis-filled environment. It's incredible to me um, the the kind, sweet, wonderful, small business-minded people that just use what they have to ha- to help make the world a better place. It's pretty amazing. Absolutely, and that's why I got in- into the uh, industry as well because just meeting people like this, they're really solid, good people really good, great yeah. people. And I went to CBC last year, also the Great American Beer Festival. Everybody around the world, like all the brewers, anybody involved in craft beer, really great people to the core, you know, and they do stuff like this and make hands. Who would think of that, right? Making hand center, but they do this, you know, and they give they give back to the community. So the community's got to support these guys. And I, I've been pounding it, you know, I like go out to your brewery, you know, every podcast, I'm like, go out. They have, they're doing curbside, contact them, call them, the, the tap room's closed, but they're still selling beer, and you got to support them. They support right. you during right. good times. You yeah. got to support them through bad times. And it's you know, not just about convenience; it's about working into your purchasing and consumption where you would buy. Also, making sure you try to buy direct or from the retailers that are actually carrying the beers. I mean, yeah. many craft brewers can't even get on the liquor store shelf or the restaurant menu now. You know, with the with what's going on. Every time you can sneak in buying from an independent craft brewer, um, that's key. That makes a difference. So work it in where you're able is, is what we've been trying to remind everybody. And it, it is important. It goes directly to supporting those retailers and breweries um, that need it most. I mean, curbside pickup, do it, man. You don't have to go in. They, they come out and they hand it to you. Yeah. Uh, all right. This this too shall pass. Like I said before, we're gonna get back. We're gonna get back, and uh, 
you know, things can't be rosy all the time, stuff like that. Life is like the heartbeat, they said, you know, like it goes up and down. And if it's a flat line, then you're dead. So there you go. (laughs) It's a heartbeat. So you're going to have your peaks and valleys, but we're going to get through this. And I I know that, uh, and I appreciate you and and what you're doing with the Brewer Association and for taking the time out today to come on and talk to us about what's happening and what you're seeing. And, you know, um, I I thank you very much. Um, Any, any, uh, like people want to get a hold of you. I I know you have the uh, craftbeer.com. Yeah, I'm I'm very active on Twitter at hers, H-E-R-Z, uses. Hers is the opposite of his. Um, so check out on Twitter, my beer adventures and, and advocacy work. Um, and I would love to follow, follow whoever right back. Um, but it's a great community. Um, thank you, Michael, for what you're doing. Congratulations on making your 75 days. Um, <laughs> I'm still alive. Can you imagine like 75 beer. days without having a beer? Yeah, that one that drop. One. That's like huge, that's right? For a brewer, it's like huge. All right. Anyway, I appreciate uh, you being on and, um, you know, I wish you the best and I'll probably bump into you at the next CBC or yeah, maybe GABF. Absolutely. Do you go to GABF? You probably do. You're in, you're in, yeah. Yeah. I've been to more than most. Yeah, well, you're over there. So yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be at that too. I plan. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, Michael. Take care, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Hey, yeah, that was Julia Hers. She was from the Brewer Association, Craft Beer Program Director, also publisher at craftbeer.com. Very knowledgeable lady, very good, and I appreciate what she's doing. We were, you know, talking about the breweries. Um, I feel for you, my brothers, my brewers. Uh, you know, stuff happens. Um, you know, life is, like, like I said, it's like a heartbeat. It goes up and down. If it's a flat line, you're dead. So we got peaks and valleys, but we survived the valleys and we, we, we get back to those peaks. And I, th- I know the craft beer industry will bounce back and we're going to be stronger than ever. We will. So uh, I'm behind you. If you want to get on the Craft Beer Storm podcast, please email me, michael at craftbeerstorm.com. If, if you like what we're doing, you like our podcast, go on iTunes or whatever platform you're listening on. Give us a rating and review. Click on those five stars. Everything will be okay. <laughs> we we got to get up in the rankings, you know. We're cranking it in uh, like Norway. I think we're like number 25 in the food categories, <laughs> which is cool. I love you guys. Norwegians, awesome. Hey, I lived in Sweden for a while, so we're waiting for Sweden. Denmark, too, where we're doing good. So we're... we're uh, we're getting out there, and uh, we need we need to get uh, up in the rankings in the U.S. And uh, we're here, and we're interviewing brewers worldwide. If you gotta, if you're in the craft beer industry, you want to talk, get on the podcast, um, Michael at craftbeerstorm.com. I'd love to have you, and we'll talk. So that's our, our podcast for today, and I will see you again on Wednesday. We're going to pick another beer style off the Great American Beer Festival list and expand on that. Over 100 different styles, and there's subcategories too. We're in the Weizen, the wheat beer, the German wheat beer category, and uh, I think we have our final one. Um, we have like five of them. But they're all different different beers. You can't lump them together. They're all different beers, and they're all great beers. So that's what we have coming this Wednesday. So we will talk to you then. Take care. Be safe. <laughs>